For decades, scientists have tried to wrap their brains around the nature of black holes. The concept of a black hole is closely connected to how we theorize space, time, and gravitational forces. Traditionally, a black hole is defined as an astronomical object with a gravitational pull so strong that nothing, not even light, can escape it. These devouring machines have long been a subject of fantastic sci-fi scenarios, making writers' minds run wild all the way to alternate universes. From interstellar to Star Trek, from Event Horizon to Treasure Island, black holes have captured our imagination. Admittedly, some of the ideas offered by sci-fi can be considered questionable, to say the least. For example, the idea of a black hole being a wormhole leading to an alternate reality is not substantiated by modern science. However, many scientific theories on black holes are just as fascinating, if not mind-blowing. If you want to know more about black holes and why their centers are the ultimate no-man's land, you're in for some juicy treats. What's in the center of a black hole? But just so you can help us keep this going, like this video and subscribe to our channel. It would be much appreciated. For the longest time, Black holes have been viewed through the lens of general relativity, a theory developed by Albert Einstein. To put it in simple terms, general relativity is about figuring out how gravity works. According to this theory, a black hole is created when a sufficiently compact mass deforms the fabric of space-time. The time slows down around the black hole. That is, it slows down to an outside observer. But for the object being sucked into the black hole, time flies very fast as it plummets toward the center in a free fall. No amount of force exerted in any direction at the speed of light or below can make an object escape once it has fallen into the black hole. It's bound to reach the black hole's center unless it's faster than the speed of light. One might wonder, what happens at the very core of the black hole? The prevailing theory suggests that the object is being infinitely condensed to a little speck of matter known as singularity. In a non-rotating black hole, the singularity occurs at a single point of infinite density, while a rotating one has a circular singularity, which could theoretically turn into a wormhole. As Lewis Carroll in Alice in Wonderland once said, this is where it gets curiouser and curiouser. How does an object shrink to an infinitesimal size of singularity? What happens when it reaches the very center of the black hole? How exactly is the object engulfed by the black hole? To answer these questions, let's start off with what typically surrounds a black hole. A collection of diffuse material spinning around a black hole in orbital motion is called an accretion disk. Accretion disks are known for their turbulent nature as loads of friction, uneven irradiance, magnetohydrodynamic effects, and other forces induce instabilities, causing orbiting material in the disk to spiral inward towards the black hole. An accretion disk is closely followed by the event horizon, which is a circular edge of a black hole. The event horizon is a spherical or oblate boundary of no escape. Once you cross the event horizon, you immediately get sucked into the black hole. Not only do you get pulled in, you are faced with a gazillion of hot particles radiating outward, known as Hawking radiation. The enormous tidal forces cause nearby matter to heat up to millions of degrees and emit radio waves and X-rays. In fact, black holes hadn't been discovered until X-ray astronomy was used. Nowadays, black holes can be observed through telescopes such as Hubble, Chandra, Swift, New Star, and NICER. The most famous image of a black hole was released on April 10, 2019, depicting a black hole emitting radio waves 
and showing that the light paths near the event horizon are highly bent. The gravitational forces near the black hole are so strong that they can cause even large star spaghettification. I kid you not, this is a real term established by British astrophysicist Martin Rees. As an object is being stretched and pulled into different directions simultaneously and with enormous force, it would probably end up resembling spaghetti, wouldn't it? Hang on, poor spaghetti. Pretty soon, you'll be reduced to almost nothing. Interestingly, spaghettification may occur even before the object crosses the event horizon around small black holes. On the other hand, this process may occur sometime after it crosses the event horizon of a massive black hole. Another important difference lies in the intensity of spaghettification, which is much stronger in relatively small, star-sized black holes. Theoretically, you can even survive falling into a supermassive black hole located at a galaxy center. Another important point to consider is by how much does an object shrink in size once it falls into the black hole. According to loop quantum gravity theory, the object inside the black hole does not infinitely reduce its size, but rather does it to a point which is no bigger than Planck length of about 1.6 times 10 to the negative 35th power meters. As loop quantum gravity theory suggests, the fabric of space and time is divided into small chunks, or Planck units, which is the fundamental limit of how small things can get. Inside a black hole, there is some repulsion, a force that resists gravitational collapse of matter on the smallest scale. However, Planck stars are not stable because as the matter is trying to squeeze itself into a tiniest little speck, the very nature of space and time prevents it from becoming smaller than Planck length. This may go on for a very long time, but eventually Planck stars end up exploding, giving off massive amounts of energy. Another theory proposes the existence of gravistars, or gravitational vacuum stars, which is hypothesized by astrophysicists Pavel Omazur and Emil Matola. According to their theory, the central part of a gravistar is composed of dark energy, and its edge is covered with a thin shell of matter. The dark energy inside makes the space-time expand, going ever outward. Some even suggest this is what makes the universe expand. Furthermore, the authors of this theory propose that the creation of gravistars may hold the keys to understanding how our universe came to be, because all the matter from a collapsing star would implode through the central hole and explode into a new dimension and expand forever. Although gravistars can be a very interesting theoretical model helping us understand black holes better, this theory has significant shortcomings. Recent observations of black hole collisions have caused the potential existence of gravistars into question, as they would give off completely different signals from what is observed. As you can see, black holes are extremely hard to study. Many things we know about them come from a long line of theorization. We might very well never get to know what's in the center of a black hole. After all, there isn't an easy way to find out. Of course, there have been attempts to create an artificial black hole. Several scientists have succeeded, among which is a group of physicists from the Technion Israel Institute of Technology. For the safety purposes, these artificial black holes are but humble specks, lacking the spaghettifying suction strength of an actual dead star. Of course, quantum simulators are the future of black hole research, even though they can only mimic black holes. The true star-sized ones are out of our reach, with the closest black hole being 1,500 light years away. But this is for the better, as we can be fairly certain that no black hole will swallow the Earth in the foreseeable future. Rest assured, you can sleep in peace. Even though most people see black holes as a threat, it might be quite beneficial to have a black hole at a safe distance. The stellar explosions that produce black holes also spew elements such as carbon, 
nitrogen, and oxygen into space. These elements make up the Earth and our own selves. Supermassive black holes in particular might play an important role in star formation within galaxies. This is why you shouldn't see black holes as heartless monsters devouring everything that comes their way. They play their own unique role in shaping the face of the universe as we know it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and hit like so we can keep doing more amazing videos like this one. Stay tuned for more.